thank you all for coming. Always amazing to see, you know, our local gardeners, artists, community people, activists, as well as visitors who've come to us from California, Georgia, and even Tanzania tonight. So really amazing. Um, for those of you who are new and want to really understand about the project um, and what we're up to here in New York City, um, this is Earth Celebrations, which is an environmental arts organization that's been in existence for 30 years. And this is our Ecological City Art and Climate Solutions um, Action Project. Um, it is both a collaborative art and climate action project that celebrates local climate solution initiatives throughout the community gardens. There are over 48 gardens in the neighborhood. Um, other climate solution initiatives throughout the neighborhood, as well as the East River Park waterfront on the Lower East Side and the river and coastal resiliency. So um, just a brief overview, the project takes nine months from March to May. We invite community partners, schools, neighborhood people, artists to collaborate, creating visual art, puppets, costumes, and performances. And all of this culminates in a cultural pageant on May 14th, which includes 20 sites. So it's 11 miles long and goes to 20 sites where all of this visual and performative work that's been created over many months um, collaboratively with the community is then presented in the pageant and further actions and engagement um, on these local climate solutions. So um, tonight you're going to hear from many of our artists who are working Locrecia Novoa on the puppet workshops and sculpt more sculptural work. Um, Sewell Golden, who's going to be leading the costume workshops. Um, you have Kathy Kreutzberg, who's been working um, with bio arts like fungi, mycelium, growing leather from kombucha, as well as using seaweed and other biodegradable materials. Um, Didi Maucher, who created the bioremediation sculpture, is going to be talking about that project. People may want to tap in and help her on that. And Katie Fraging has been for many years leading collaborative painting projects, these sort of mobile murals, which this year is going to be a memory mural of the East River Park. Um, so, and then we'll hear from, you know, some of our specialists in the various arenas of the gardens, um, Wendy on Lower East Side sustainability initiatives and um, Ali is gonna give a little update on what's happening with the East River Park. So um, we can just, Hannah, if you wanna introduce our first presenter and- That's great, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Felicia. Um, just give a pretty detailed over outline of what's happening here today. My name's Hannah. I was the production coordinator for the past um, two ecological cities. So I'm happy to be back and seeing some familiar faces here today. It's always exciting. Um, our first presenter today, is the incredible Lucrecia Navoa, who will be leading our art and climate solution puppet workshop. So we'll bring her on screen here and we can see what we have this year. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, I well, am we're going to get your yeah, presentation up. Yeah, I'm a visual artist. I'm, uh, I have to say, I am enjoying our celebration for many years and I'm a uh, I think I learned a lot, not just improving my own um, thing about puppeteering, mass making, et cetera, but all concern about this thing. So this year, um, we are going to make a three giant puppet, 10 feet tall. Uh, and the picture is three. Uh, wait a second, please go to the, yeah. The giant puppet, this is a trend 10 feet tall, uh, we are going to add hands this year. The puppeteer is inside the dress, cone dress. Next one, please. Um, we are going to work in the face uh, puppet with paper mache. And the first uh, character is going to be garden, green infrastructure, infrastructure, uh, all uh, element 
in creating this uh, concept and made them drawings on the face. Next one. Um, this is going to be the design for the dress of this puppet, Included some concept we could, couldn't uh, do it in the face or repetition of the same. Uh, this year I had the research, which is uh, very interesting how we can find a lot of information. And if somebody is really interested in get this, I can share with you. Um, next one. Uh, the second phase is going to call coastal resiliency. Um, I decide to uh, add the opposite concept. What is going on when we don't do anything to protect the city in this case? Uh, this is the right side of the face with all barriers and parks to prevent the water going to the city. And the left side is what's going on. Example, what happened in the sun, Sunday story 2012. Uh, no barrier, so water go easily to the city damaging. Actually, many gardens we have in the lower east side help a lot to uh, avoid the flooding. So, that works. Um, next one. Uh, also part of the design, I have information. That information is uh, especially when we are going to make the design on the actual canvas, we can get and see pictures. Uh, but I decide make two simple uh, design people can see on the parade what's going on when we don't prevent we don't make changes uh, on the city, uh, avoid the, the water come in. So there are two examples, which one is wrong, which one is the right one, the second one, uh, flood protection, uh, raise the park, uh, avoid the water coming to, to the city. And next one, the third phase is going to be ecological city planet. Um, I encourage to get this YouTube um, video. It's very interesting, very interesting. And uh, yeah, city design concerning the social, economic, and environmental impact. Uh, the another picture, please. Yeah. Same thing, uh, getting picture, getting ideas, and uh, anything we can add to the puppet and the design face and dresses help us to motivate people when we are in the parade and also when we are uh, working on the workshop. So basically this one, the last um, slide is with all the information I, to go, I got in this research and next uh, slides is the last one, I believe. Yeah, it's all, all I, I got. I got a lot of information before I make a drawing. So it's the way we do, yes? So understand what's going on. So practically this is uh, the presentation for now. A little fast because not much time, but you can ask and I can share with you the document. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Lucrecia. Yeah. Um, this, we're looking forward to seeing those all. Um, back to gallery here. All right, awesome. Moving right along then, um, the next person that we'll be hearing from is Sol Golden, um, who will be running the Art and Climate Solutions costume workshops. So she'll be sharing a bit more about her designs with us today. Um, let me pull up. Yeah, and for box. those of you who understand, we, there was a previous planning meeting in November where uh, we had experts in, on the various issues from the community present, and then the designs were generated between November and now. So we didn't just spontaneously come to this. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's been months. All right, we'll get Sol's presentation up here. Awesome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. 
and that was a lovely pre presentation, Lucrezia. Um, so for this year, oh, I am a costume designer and maker and an artist, and uh, I recently started growing, um, excuse me, there's some noise in the background. Um, I recently started growing natural dyes um, as part of my practice. Um, so here you see the three designs generated from the wonderful presentation in November. Um, the first look is titled Bios, is based on and inspired by um, the idea of the bioswale. Um, and we'll get to that later. And then the second look is based on, um, or is called the community garden spirit. And the third look is the drawdown cape. Oh, you can go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, so the bioswales look is based on um, the idea of bioswales, which whose goals are to absorb and transport large runoff events. Um, and these, uh, this is an alternative to sewer systems and um, is a carbon cap, also a carbon capture method. Okay, next slide. Um, recently, the Pope has said that the earth is an environment to be safeguarded, a garden to be cultivated. So the silhouette is loosely based on um, the silhouette of the Pope. Okay, <laughs> next, nice. next slide. Um, and I wanted to cross over with the materials that are used in bioswales, like um, gardening cloth is used, and then um, plants that uh, create root, root systems and then naturally um, collect runoff and uh, re recycle it into and uh, filter it naturally. Um, so part of the method, oh, you can go to the next slide. Um, some of the methods will be hand sewing, um, machine sewing, and then shibori dyeing uh, with weld, which is the plant you saw on the last slide. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and then on to the community garden spirit. Um, the purpose of this look is to celebrate gardens, ecology, food, and fabric. Um, much of the fabric that was made hundreds of years ago actually comes from plants. Um, it's only recently that we have a lot of plastic in our fabric. Um, okay, next slide. Um, so the materials for this look will be found in upcycled green fabric, dye experiments from welds, and there's one left off. Um, hopefully plants like yucca and bear grass that I can source locally. Next slide. Um, and so some of the methods will be post-consumer sourcing, machine sewing, foraging for greenery, floral arranging, and hand stitching. Next slide. Um, oh, here is some of the research for, oh wait, did we skip one? Is the drawdown cape? Oh yeah, okay. Um, so here is the third look titled the drawdown cape. And a lot of the ideas for this uh, cape came from the book by Paul Hawkins, which aims to collect uh, many diverse ideas about carbon capture and um, climate restoration um, in one document and it's all online as well um, so some of the themes that resonated with me move to the next slide oh can you go to the next slide um, oh yep some of the themes that um, resonated with me are silvopasture bicycle infrastructure, um, managed grazing, carpooling, and plant-rich diets. Um, and you could go to the next slide. Oh, and so here are some, here's a, kind of like a pattern um, layout with some of the ideas um, and then the, what the shape of that garment will be. 
Um, next slide. Um, and here are some of the methods. So our first workshop will be um, community tie dyeing or hand dyeing with natural dyes. Next slide. Um, and then quilting, which is a wonderful metaphor for um, climate uh, change, climate resolution, um, to use, uh, to take discarded materials and join them to for warmth I don't know. I think they got muted. Was it Zoom bombing? I, yeah, I think it was Zoom bombing. Okay. Okay. Well, we're you you're good to go now. So sorry for that. My Facebook got hacked recently, so I hope oh. it wasn't something to do with that. Did um, anyone catch who that was, Mena? If you can figure out who who did it so we block them from the next time i'm, I'm trying to just mute all per participants without exiting of my um recording okay screen. okay yeah go ahead Musul. okay um i that was the last slide for me great lovely thank you so much so great you. thank you so much um really appreciate that and yeah sorry everyone for that um Technical things are part of this. Um, yeah, thank you so much. We're looking forward to seeing all those um, designs here and being able to um, collaborate on those. Um, next, we'll be hearing from Dee Dee Moucher, who will be talking about um, her bioremediation sculpture. So let me go ahead and spotlight Dee Dee and we'll get her presentation up if she is present. Dee Dee, are you here? Yeah, Dee Dee. There. Okay, one second. Let me unmute you and I'll. Um... All right, you just. I'm muted. Yep. I'm not. Am I muted? You are I'm not muted. muted. You're good to go. We're going to get your presentation up. Okay. Um, you have to share content. Um, earlier, you told me you wanted to present your own, or do you want me to do it now? Can you share my screen? I have to be a host to do that. Correct, let me see what I can do real quick. It's the button right next to share screen. There's a little arrow and you can choose multiple. Okay, got it. You should be able to now, Didi. Did I? Good. Well, thank you everyone. Those have been uh, lovely presentations and I look forward to all of the fun ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, to help everyone, if I can get, give a hand to someone, that would be good. Um, let's see, starting there. So I have a collective called the Moss Collective Masters of Succession, which is based in um, the idea of cr creating better water, air, and soil and selves to um, create a better place. Uh, and we start at the level of the microbe and redesign everything up from there. So this has to do with my sculpture, which I live a lifestyle of beneficial succession as I make the sculpture and everyone's welcome to help me and discover what that is. Um, it's not so complicated. We just try to live our lives and reap the benefits of our, um, our efforts in trying to live closer to um, re regenerative lifestyles, which create byproducts that I can use in the sculpture. And that's coming off the idea of this uh, Wiliki. Um, uh, I went to one of Eric's lectures a long time ago in 2012 or something. And this was really interesting to me, the, um, the mirror web, which shows where the humans are, which is right there in the little red dot and how we're all interconnected. And so the most of the 
the mush in the world is is microbes and plants and fun and, but but humans are right here we're pretty small so it's kind of fun to just know that um and we have uh this is some of my other art that i do and it just shows that um a quote my friend says recently he has a book called the new earth humans have a creative force to shape reality, not through technology from the head, but by biotechnology from the heart. And I, I liked that, so, oops. So the three um, sections of what I'm gonna talk about is what I'm doing for Ecological City, which is the fire meeting sculpture I've been doing for several years. And then to make the sculpture and the things that go on it, we stockpile bioremediation technologies. And so that'll be number two. And number three is the uh, pageant and the procession and the lifestyle that comes together at the end, which I think is a really nice culmination of all of these um, pieces. And I call it microbes to metropolis. Um, and so for the sculptures, the, we have one, two, three, four, four years, and the next will be a fifth year. And we'll start with the elder Gaia, which I just named Grace. She still gets a name, like she never really had a name. So or maybe her name was Gaia. But I thought Grace was a really nice name. So she cares for people and earth and leads the way for the next generation. And then, then, yeah, and so here she is floating. And all of what she's made with are lifestyles of the people who helped make her, which was many people and Marta being one of them. And um, the byproducts of our lifestyle that um, added to her um, life. And this is the next one, the next year I did the youth and I call it they of the willows because it's a, a she, he, and a they, she's a they. And this just came out of not really planning, but just what happened with the, the pieces that came together, the, the sticks that came together that um, uh, revealed her to me and um, with help of other people, of course. And there she is. So there she is again. It was a conversation um, and this was her floating away and she actually floated away. We got her in the water and all the mud balls fell in and uh, life became better. So the, the booms here are what actually holds the raft from going over in the waves. And we've been lucky for many years not to have so many waves. But in this particular case, the, um, the dock created a splashing and a sort of a, a tidal that came off the walls. And it knocked her over hitting this uh, pier. And then she was down for uh, five minutes or so. And we thought it was over, but then she popped up. She, he, they, they popped up. And um, that was really fun. So I thought that it was sort of as if, if uh, gratitude was being given to the water. The next year was the lockdown and I was at Grace Exhibi Exhibition Space and um, I, uh, needed to go out and live my lifestyle, which I didn't really do to order to collect the, to accumulate the pieces for the sculpture. But I would listen to a Naomi Klein uh, and she said, she was quoting Milton Friedman who said, you know, whatever's being laying around is what's being put to use. So I started looking around like, what do I have laying around? And I actually had all of the pieces to make a miniature one. So this is what came out of it was Solar Sun um, who escorts his Gaia Mother Earth and so it was a time where I thought the youth were taking hold and helping their um, parents or the elder people to take a break from our, our, uh, our hard work and, and starting to take over and steward the next um, generation is stewarding and giving the mother a break, but she doesn't ever take a break because she actually is dissolved in the water and she's working on the microbes. So no taking breaks. So here it is again. And there's the Gaia on the raft. And these are just, that's kombucha leather and these are microbes in the, in the mud balls and there's kelp and there's mussels, there's echinacea. The next year I did the turtle and the frog. Um, I started with a turtle and the, the loggerhead turtle and the ideas about that. And then I added this, this uh, koki, the, um, the tropical red-eyed tree frog as another indicator species and uh, they found themselves together and looking for home and they go off and they also clean the water, air and soil as a byproduct of going off and finding their refuge or with, or refinding their home. And here's JC helping with the, the, the booms that are on the side are made with dog hair and um, people hair. 
and um, they float and they hold it, they hold the piece up. So the next thing is my idea in general, because this is only one sculpture and I'm hoping in the future we can do 3,333 sculptures. So if anyone wants to make this happen or has ideas on how to make it happen, please contact me and let's do more than just one. Um, these are the thank yous. There's lots of people to thank um, or actually and to who, uh, and hopefully we have this many people helping this year. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Lifestyles of beneficial recept uh, bioremediation and symbiosis, harvesting phragmites, bladderette kelp, mussels, making water, bioremediating mud balls, amulets, growing mushrooms, brewing kombucha, com collecting seeds, cultivating oysters or eating them um, to use um, mycoremediation, harvesting dry milkweed to make braids and stockpiles of seeds. So many things to do. <laughs> and here is a list of the, in a phase order from the year one, I, I um, documented. And this is getting Phragmites. So one of the jobs is to go to the beach. It's not so hard. Let's go to the beach and collect Phragmites. And there's some community gardens that usually need to some pruning. And so that's very handy to help the community gardens and also take the waste home. Uh, bladderet kelp and mussels. The bladderet kelp seems to grow in the mussels. Um, and with the, and we only take the ones that release themselves. I don't pull them unless they so I actually ask them if they want to come with me and I only take a small bag. So hopefully that's okay. And the ferry back is really nice and we can either bike with them or carry them on the, the subway. Um, this is braiding the milkweed that um, I biked by. I bike by it, but I'm not sure I can anymore because it's near the Lower East Side Ecology Center, but I'm sure there's more milkweed stalks around this fall, this winter, sorry. And save your scobies if you are doing any kombucha at home with your lifestyle of, of bioremediation and symbiosis, you probably might have scobies. So we could really use your scobies and, uh, and your fur if you have pets and you take them to the grooming. We could use some of your fur or your hair waste at the hair salon. Um, if you're growing mushrooms at home, um, I am, so you don't have to, but you're welcome to join us. What we do is we do the Paul Stamets technique where we put the, the um, oyster mushrooms into the hair. They like hair, they eat hair, and they also like um, oil. So they break down petroleum, which is really handy because the booms are on there. They actually also absorb the um, oil on the surface of the water. And then we can actually remediate that as well. And oysters. So we add oysters. We have this little oyster cage. Usually I have cages are hanging off the booms and they sit they uh, float in the water on the below the booms uh, so they don't sink to the bottom and if you like to make things with seeds that's all another option and here's a lot of the seeds that could be used for um, headdresses for example um, so that could be helpful uh, anything you have extra like decoration this was decoration my friend brought um, to add to the sculpture at the end. If you wanna add decoration, that would be great. Um, weaving with willow, I could always use help weaving. It's just basically in the beginning, we do the, the grid, which we can do. And these are ankles that I was making for the first year. I can teach you how to do that. And for the, the raft, we actually braid the Phragmites. It's a lot of work. See, we're braiding it. And um, then we tie it off with willow. It's tied off not with string, but with willow. Unless it falls apart, then we do use string. Uh, there. And so the next thing, uh, those are the pieces of the sculpture, but then we want to stockpile biospheres and we put these on top of the sculpture. So we have this, the seed balls, we have the mud balls. Um, this is with Parsons, this is the earth school. We made the little amulets that we hand out to each garden and that's another job, so much to do. This year I wanted to add, not that we need to add more, but um, I've, every year I've wanted to make this clay paint and maybe the dyes that um, we could uh, leverage some of the dyes or maybe make a lot of dye together and uh, have that as well as we make some bio paint to paint the streets along the way of the procession. And then I have these hula hoop skirts that drop seeds. So we put seeds in the skirt. And so as we are walking along, we drop seeds 
So there's some two more ideas for this year, not that we have to do it, but I just thought it'd be fun to put it out there. Um, so there it is, so that's it. We start with the level of the microbes and this year because of the COVID, there's um, a lot of research on how viruses and microbes affect each other and they do tr uh, transport, um, they call it G, what do they call it? G something horizontal gene transfer. And that does happen between the eukaryotes and the viruses. The eukaryotes um, and viruses exchange information and they both use it to their own good or bad. And that's it. So biotechnology from the heart. Let's go. Yay. Hey, Yay. sounds great. That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dee Dee. You're welcome. That's it. Bye. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get you back to um, yeah. gallery here. One second. There we go. All right. Yeah, if, yeah, if Hannah, you can scroll through. There are three screens now. Just I'm so we doing get, it. get and Adrian maybe get some shots. Yeah. The absolutely different screens. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Didi. I'm really looking forward to that. And as you all noticed, there's a lot of room for collaboration. Um, in that project. So reach out to Didi or MOS Collective to see how you can get involved. Um, always more to learn and do. Um, next up, we'll be hearing from Kathy Kreutzberg, um, who has done our zero waste costume um, last year and done some um, bio arts workshops. So we're going to hear from her and her process here. I'll go ahead and spotlight her. All right. Take it away. Oh, I had, um, this is a different, this is old, <laughs> sorry, but I gave you a new um, slideshow. Did you get, you didn't get the slideshow? <clears throat> we'll check here. Yeah, that one, because that was before I had ever made any of these um, costumes. And oh, I was, was that one for the planning, the original meeting? That was from last year. Yeah. And um, last year we had an actual costume and um, I sent, do you want me, I can resend it if you need me to. But no, if you know. uploaded it to the folder, Maggie, are you there? Yeah, I, I'm looking at the folder and I only um, see one. Oh, really? Maybe you there. uploaded the wrong one. Because she's looking in the folder. No, I didn't upload the wrong one, but I can send it again if you'd like. Or but do that you want to share your screen? Is it easier? Wait a minute. It, um, let me just, I don't know if I can do it quickly, though, because I'm not, here, let me see. Um, if you want, Kathy, if you want to try and send that again, I can. Yeah, let me, let me send it again to you. I mean, sure. I can try to set it up as a share screen also, but I'm just not re ready to do that immediately. Okay, no let me problem. share it with you again. Okay. Um, you want so it while Maggie's doing that, Hannah, you want to go to the next? Yeah. That's what, that was my thought exactly. So well, while Kathy does that here, we'll go ahead and move to the next presenter. Um, let me get that set up here. Okay. All right. So next, Catherine. Yep, we're going to be hearing from Catherine Fraging. Um, Catherine's been involved in the project many years, and this year it looks like we're doing a different kind of mural. It's called a memory mural. Um, so she's going to tell us a bit more about that in the community painting projects that um, she does. Let's. Um, we pulled that up before I pulled her up. One second. There you are. All right, go ahead, Catherine. Go ahead, Nick. That's the title page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, my projects generally are connected to the gardens, um, although I've done some with the East River Park as well. And uh, I tend, I do illustrations with lots of community involvement. It's very traditional, really, but it is uh, a lot of listening, a lot of conversations, a lot of discussion about um, gardens and what can go on there, all the possibilities. And then I tend to record them in a black and white drawing 
and then people come back and um, and paint them in, and then they're displayed at their garden so that people can see all the actions that are going on there. So the first year that I started this project, we did um, a dozen parks, and these are just some of the uh, banners that we created for those parks. So go on to the next. So here then, see people have a lot of pride in them in the end. <laughs> and uh, you can go, go to the next. And then the next year we did, uh, we moved over to the East River Park and um, talked about the community vision. And um, those are, there you see people getting involved with the illustration and painting that in. Again, these are people submit um, photographs that I work with. Go ahead to the next. And they're done uh, in parks or in situ. So uh, there's a lot of good energy and a lot of good discussion about, in this case, all the different um, resiliency techniques that were going to be used in the new, supposedly, supposedly new uh, design for the East River Park. So uh, keep on with the next one, please. And these were then paraded in a 40 foot mural. Um, so, go, and they get displayed on fences. And the next year we uh, had the UN Sustainable Development Goals to work with. And we did an underlay of the, of the goals um, and then put on top of that, all the different actions that were going on in the park. So the black lines are labels for the parks with the action that's uh, in that park. And it's related to the um, a mandala uh, graphic that the UN issued uh, to describe their sustainable development goals. Go ahead to the next. And here are some details showing upcycling and uh, different things. Yeah. So some of the things that, go back one please. Uh, some of the things that are being illustrated there are things like uh, bioswales swales and water harvesting and pollinators, um, composting, permeable paths, air filtration, um, lots of biodiversity and water catchment, solar, uh, lots of different techniques that are being exhibited and and uh, promoted in the parks. Um, so go ahead, next. And then with the COVID, we uh, went into the schools and and had more discussions about what what are the design solutions that are required, and uh, ended up having uh, kids do. Uh, one solution at a time and put them together in these flags, which are very um, transportable and you can put them on fences anywhere. And um, I'm actually thinking of making a sculpture out of them eventually, but um, a tremendous number of ideas. You can uh, go through and see a few details. Go ahead. Um, this is showing a workshop on the left and another fence we did. Go ahead. And here's some details. Yeah. Keep going. So this year we have a challenge. Um, uh, I actually am, uh, have called for submissions. For, from people to talk about their memories of the park. This is actually showing the bad news, but uh, of course, people's memories are mostly good. There are lots of um, pictures of um, picnics and sports events and a lot of playing in water. And um, so we'll probably end up doing um, uh, large murals again that are themes. Could you go back to, or go ahead and see what you get? It might not be another one. Yeah, we might take a do a large mural like that, and then uh, maybe not show the 
the bad news, but uh, talk about start um, collaging in different things uh, that will show uh, the happy times in in this case the band shell um, or at the um, seal park um, and it'll be um, based on what the submissions are that I get by the 15th of March, which is when, so we're calling for all these illustrations and I'll come up with something for people to, to work on and to relate to. And um, sometimes I think the best part of it is the conversations during the workshops and the whole thing should be filmed. But anyway, it's uh, really traditional, but it's a listening and it's interactive and it allows people to participate um, uh, with their personal experiences. So that's, that's what I've got. Thanks, Katie. Awesome. Thank you so much, Catherine. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And as you all heard, they're um, open for submissions here. So if you'd like or know anyone that would be interested, please send them that way. Yeah, um, we've been asking for people to send in um, their photos as well as text memories of the East River Park. And for those who are new joining because of the Coastal Resiliency Project, it's the park is now halfway destroyed and is going to be under construction for the next so many years. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, Let's see, uh, Maggie, do you have Kathy's um, presentation ready? Let's see here. Okay, let me go ahead, I'll, I'll spotlight you here. Um, um, I, do you want me to pull it up? Um, if you, Maggie, are we, did we not get it in the drive? No. I, I just shared it with you um, directly. I don't know if you want oh, me, me personally. To. I sent it to you and Manon and Felicia, all of you, okay. unless you want me to screen share. Okay, I see here. Um, let me, I'll just forward it to Maggie real quick. Okay. Um, Why don't you just try to screen share, Kathy? Let me see if this. Yeah, I, I think it might be easier if I try to do that. Um, let me let me do this here. Um, so you go ahead. I'll, I'll let me pull this up for you. Um, hmm. Okay. Can we all see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We'll move it over. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, last year, I was taking when during the pandemic, I was taking um, belly dancing lessons online. And so I came up with this idea to make a, a belly dancing skirt. However, I have since dropped my uh, belly dancing lesson. So I may need uh, a little help finding another person to wear, wear the skirt. <laughs> I'm a little out of practice. Okay, next slide. So this year I wanted to add some new additions and um, modifications because um, a few parts of the costume were a little bit cumbersome. And um, also I am new to using these biomaterials and I had um, previously had a breastplate that was made out of um, kelp and I'd like to make something a little bit lighter and um, um, that fits a little bit better now that I know uh, kelp is very, um, it dries very crunchy and um, very stiff. So I'm going to work a little bit more with it in a different way. Um, I also would like to <clears throat> um, add some 
or make a new headdress that's a little lighter. The one I made before was made during the pandemic when everyone was afraid to even leave their houses uh, the previous year to that. So I wove um, some Virginia creeper vines together to make um, uh, a headdress and um, it's a little bit heavy if you want I didn't realize how long <laughs> I'd be wearing it so I was going to try to make something a little bit lighter that included um, mycelium uh, grow growth uh, shapes and also maybe some beach glass or some other kinds of materials um, the belly dancing skirt though was originally made with spoons that were hammered flat that were found in a composting yard okay next one please So this is uh, the process, which was new to me as of last year. So I tried a bunt pan to make the form of, um, you can see on the upper right hand side, that's actually a mycelium form. And um, it was, it's, it grew really successfully and it was very strong and dense. And um, I found that you could make a lot of other smaller things too using um, the mycelium. Um, and uh, hemp. So next one, please. And um, I just today got the materials for growing the kombucha leather in smaller containers. And I was thinking of stitching them together in sort of a quilt like pattern. So I am also like DD, I am in need of um, the uh, scobies to get started and I'm ready to start growing it. Last year I found it took a really long time to get it started because we were in a kind of a colder room, but um, I'm going to try to get it uh, started a little bit warmer. So th these are sort of the steps of what it looks like. And for a long time I was thinking, will I ever get kombucha leather? And finally it it grew and got nice and thick. And those are actually the pieces I grew uh, myself there that are pictured. Okay, next. And I found this online, this picture kind of depicts of how I would like to do the next skirt project to go uh, with the belly dancing, like this, the, the sort of the, the sound making, making aspect of the belly dancing skirt. Um, I wanted to also um, grow some kombucha leather that could then be attached together. And I liked the way this one was sort of stitched in these um, triangular or these um, diamond shaped forms. And I'm hoping to do something similar to that this year if I can get enough of it to grow. Okay, next. And these are also some accessories that I sort of came came up with um, well you also can see here on the right hand side the the staff that I made with mycelium and um, you can also see the kelp in the middle um, or actually no I think that might be the kombucha leather but I uh, grew in the necklace um, and the armbands were um, grown in an old egg carton and then I um, glued and stitched them right onto um, these um, armbands and then also onto a choker. So I want to do a lot more accessories uh, this year. Okay, next. And this is the process of covering the um, kelp over um, a form. So I want to make it a little more distinctive in its form this year. Okay, next. And I also, um, I thought of adding something a little more sparkly to give it some pizzazz um, this year. And so I was thinking of maybe, I had to wear a mask to work every day, you know, every day. So I have all of this um, uh, mylar that's really lightweight and silvery and shiny. So I was thinking of incorporating these um, packages, the mask packages, right into the, um, the, the accessories to give it, you know, some brightness and also some beach glass. I'm, I'm considering using beach glass also and, and attaching those in 
some other areas so that it's a little bit, um, like I said, sparkly. Okay, I think, uh, is, I think that might be the last slide. Is there any more? That appears to be it. Okay, great. Thank you. Kathy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'll move our spotlight here. All right. So went a little out of order today, but um, thank you everyone for all your wonderful presentations. Um, finally, we'll be hearing from Felicia. So um, let me go ahead and pull up your spotlight here, Felicia, and we'll hear a bit more about the project this year. Um, yeah, so Maggie, just, you know, go like every few seconds, I'll keep saying next. Okay, so um, for those of you who are new, this is the Ecological City Art and Climate Solutions um, Action Project, bringing together the climate solution initiatives that the community has created throughout the community gardens, neighborhood and waterfront. So if you really took an aerial view of what was going on in the neighborhood, when we came up with this in 2017, you would just see this incredible ecosystem. Um, you can stop here for a second. Um, and you know, over the past 30 years, we had this huge effort to preserve the gardens. And we were thinking, well, this is incredible because we were successful and we actually preserved the gardens. They got transferred to parks and to land trusts and we lost some, but we saved many. And 30 years later, we have them today um, but we were really thinking back in the 90s, we were preserving open space and a place for community connection and gathering and outdoor environmental centers. But we didn't think about the gardens as climate solutions. And Hurricane Sandy was really the event that changed um, how we viewed the gardens because they absorbed the flood water. And after that moment in time, oh, you can go back to that slide. After that moment in time, um, it really became apparent that, you can go to the next one, that the gardens had given birth to all of these incredible climate solutions. So tonight, many of the artists have referred to um, these various garden sites and climate solution initiatives, such as rainwater harvesting, bioswales, pollinator gardens, people putting in solar microgrids, people doing vertical farming, sustainable agriculture, permeable pathways so that you know, we have less pavement in the city and can absorb the flood water. And then also looking at the gardens for their incredibly valuable role in terms of sequestering carbon, and reducing heat island um, effect. And um, Paul Mankiewicz, who's here on the call, can talk more about that. But there, you know, there was an incredible recognition. Um, and so if you could connect the dots between what was happening within the gardens, the neighborhood with rooftop bee farming, you can go to the next, and green roofs, as well as what was happening on the waterfront. So post Hurricane Sandy, um, we had, which was a federal project um, and the project that was part of this coastal resiliency initiative in Lower East Side was called the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project. And many people in the community were involved for four years in an initial design plan that had a lot of community support and participation. Um, our first pageant, you can go to the next, actually um, celebrated this community vision for flood protection. And it was only after the pageant in 2019, suddenly in the fall that Mayor de Blasio dismissed the original plan and proposed a new plan that many in the neighborhood um, were not so fond of. It would destroy the park. It was more destructive, destroy all the mature trees. Um, not really save anything. And everyone just felt like, well, it's like we're going backwards instead of getting um, improvements on climate, we're actually destroying it for some future improvement. Um, and people just felt there was a better way of doing this. Um, also hoped that many of their ideas that they wanted, um, such as the rolling hillside seawall berm, or, or you can stop here, there, park deck over the FDR, um, you know, are any of these ideas going to be included? So the pageant brings together 
um, all of these initiatives from um, the gardens. Again, this is all, you know, you talk about urban planning that comes top down. This is all grassroots generated urban planning that's really created a sustainable city model. Um, oftentimes they put billions of dollars um, into city initiated plans and at the same time sacrifice what the community has created that um, is so valuable to the city. Um, so we need greater recognition of what the community is actually provided in terms of climate solutions. Um, so you have 12 gardens. We have several neighborhood sites that include the Earth School's Green Roof, the Sixth Street Community Center with their rooftop bee farm. And then the original pageant had five sites along the waterfront, each celebrating different aspects and architectural features of the park and coastal resiliency and um, other programs for river cleaning. You can keep going. Um, so these are all the different um, climate solutions. And every year um, we revise depending on what's going on in the neighborhood, just like now half the East River Park is already torn apart. So we, it seemed appropriate this year to do a memory mural. Okay. Um, here's a list of the climate solutions. Um, you know, we can make this available if people want to go back and really um, look into the detail. Uh, continue. So the process, as I said, is nine months. We begin in November with the meeting where we have our local environmental science people and experts in the different arenas of gardens, neighborhoods, sustainability like Wendy and the waterfront who present the ideas. And then over the past few months, the different artists involved have generated designs like Lucrecia with uh, creating puppets based on those initial meetings where people sort of brainstormed the different um, issues that the neighborhood was confronting. Um, so they work from clay and then create paper mache puppets. You can go to the next. Um, these were the puppets of uh, zero waste and climate water that were created in 2020. Um, and then we run the costume workshops. Usually it's been Michelle Brody. This year we have Soul Golden. Um, again, working with the same themes. You have Kathy, this was with the zero waste costume that you just spoke about. Go to the next. Dee Dee with the bioremediation sculpture who will need lots of participation so people can reach out if they're interested in helping Dee Dee out. Next. Um, this is Catherine Fragang. This was from the Mobile Mural Project. It'll be similar where we run workshops in various schools and in collaboration with different partners, such as Lower East Side Ecology Center, University Settlement, um, the New York Public Library even reached out wanting to host one of the workshops. So um, we do as many as we can. We even have some workshops at some of the street festivals. Some years we've had theater directors, this is who collaborated with Goals um, that was working on the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. And they actually worked with residents from the NYCHA housing who um, were devastated um, throughout Hurricane Sandy and survived it and then created a performance about their experience. Um, and other choreographers like Jody Sperling, who's collaborated with the University Settlement, creating dance performances um, also related to the waterfront. So then all of this energy of like 50 different community partners and thousands of community people over many months and culminating through many years, um, go to the next culminates on Saturday, May 14th in an 11 mile, five hour procession to the 20 sites. So the procession itself has um, the puppets not only from the current year, but also from previous years. Um, we have visuals um, like this year, one of the years celebrated um, the community's vision for the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Park Project. Um, you can see on the left, is a flood map of Manhattan, which became the flood map costume. On the right is the sustainable development goals 
um, costumes. So we take all of these ideas and turn them into visuals. Katie's mobile mural, which was incredible, like 40 feet long. Um, and there is Dee Dee's bioremediation sculpture that rides on a pedicab all day until it gets offered to the river. Um, and along the way, gardeners receive mud ball amulets um, and make offerings of flowers. And um, each of the performances celebrates, go to the next, the climate solution initiative at that site. So like, in other words, East Side Outside Community Garden had a very active composting um, program there. So we celebrated um, composting and all of the performances, whether it's a song or poetry or music or dance is related to that site. Um, this is Artichoke Dance Company celebrating um, upcycling. Um, so each of the gardens takes on a different solution and then using all of the different um, art forms available, um, these performances are created for each of the sites. And they're usually, you know, short, like five, seven minute um, performances. And then we move to the next site. Uh, you can keep going. That is the uh, climate consequences, costume for one year, fire and flood. So um, these costumes are really um, beautiful and many of them we use year to year. This was children's workshop school that celebrated art and science education and the kids um, performed a song outside of the school. It was really beautiful. So, you know, the whole pageant is really put together um, with community participation, local artists, school kids, community centers, um, sometimes world-renowned artists, um, neighborhood artists. So um, everybody comes together um, sort of equally within um, the structure of, of the pageant itself. And each celebrates by um, offering water um, to a ceremonial bowl that then gets offered to the river at the end as the waters filter um, runoff from flowing into the river. We celebrate urban organic agriculture and vertical farming. Um, Steve Dalashinsky had written an incredible poem that um, Mindy actually will be reading as he passed away um, to honor him. Steve, as well as the beautiful words. Um, we celebrate the solar microgrid that was um, to be put in at 9th Street Community Garden. The Lower East Side Girls Club also sang a song for solar. So um, with each of the themes, you know, it's open enough that people can use various different art forms. You can go to the next. And the next, you can go to the next, yeah. So um, you can just go like skip through a bunch now quickly because I want to wrap it up. But um, you can see here just some of the just beautiful work that gets created, you know, between the artists and the community. Um, many, many of the gardens, like here's Elizabeth Roof and she is the gardener at Green Oasis singing a song about bioswale. Um, Pam Peer from Green Oasis Garden offering water, celebrating the pollinator garden and a Bhutto dance um, that celebrates the pollinator garden they have over there. Lower East Side Girls Club had created pollinator costumes. Um, so different groups, you know, anybody can really say, oh, I'd like to join in and create something related to one of these sites and one of these um, themes and then go out like and actually do the research. Marsha Newfield, who I think is on this call has you know, gone out, interviewed gardeners, created a poem last year about Elizabeth Street Garden that's struggling um, to preserve itself even though it's slated for destruction for development. Um, 
And, you know, so it was a whole process of her getting to know the gardens, doing the research and then developing um, the poem. We celebrate healing and wellness at Paraiso Garden. Next. Carbon sequestration. Keep going. You can keep going, Meg. Rainwater harvesting at 6th and B with the water harvesting pond. Beautiful song, the earth school kids. So that, you know, for each of these things, just imagine there were, you know, many workshops that were created to engage the kids in their school to celebrate the green roof. And then we get to the Sixth Street Community Center where we celebrate their rooftop beef farm and the youth program. I think we have someone from Sixth Street Community Center on the call too, and they'll be working with their youth program to develop another performance. And then we finally get to the waterfront. So obviously this year, the section south of Houston is currently destroyed. Um, I put in a permit for an adapted um, use of the park for the section between 6th to 12th Street. So um, I've been waiting to get a reply back from the Manhattan Parks Commissioner um, on what they're gonna allow. Um, and hopefully they will just allow us to use this section of the park just as we use the other section. Um, so that's my hope. I don't see why that should be an issue. Um, and um, yeah, this is some of the performances that were created um, in response to the dismissal of the community's vision for the, for the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. And next, and yeah. So we celebrate different river organizations are honored as stewards of the river. We celebrate the mussels and planting of oysters to organically cleanse the river, as well as the planting of wetlands um, that we hope will be done in the future to buffer sea level rise, as well as filter pollutants. And all of it culminates in a closing ceremony with dances, um, performance, and the offering of the bioremediation sculpture. Go to the next. Can you go to the next? Yeah. So there is Dee Dee's sculpture. There it is going into the water. And there, oh, go back. And there it is sailing away past the Brooklyn Bridge, past uh, the Manhattan Bridge. It, it was really um, a magical year. Hopefully, we can get that to happen again. And yep, you can. So, and there we are, we have the closing, you can keep going, there are a few more slides. Um, and all of this action, you know, spills over into here we are participating in um, East River Park, Save East River Park March, going to City Hall to testify on behalf of the East River Park, as well as bringing the climate solutions with the Greta Thunberg and the climate strike in 2019. So, um, you know, I call it creative testimony. So everything that gets created can be reused, re-engaged, show up at City Hall, participate as creative testimony. Um, you know, it doesn't end at the end of the pageant. So um, hopefully you got a great idea. We can go to grid view. Um, hopefully you got a good idea of how you might be able to plug in. Awesome, thank you so much, Felicia. Um, let's get back to grid view here. We can see all of your lovely faces. Thank you everyone so much for being here. Let me see what we have next here. All right. Okay, so now, um, now that we've um, concluded with the presentations here, um, it looks like we're gonna be opening up for Q and A. Um, well, and this also gives us a chance here, I see, um, to, yeah, anyone that's new to Earth Celebrations, um, this is a great chance for us to 
um, do a brief intro and see how you came um, to hear about Earth Celebrations and Ecological City um, and how you'd like to be involved. So Felicia, if you want to take that away and yeah, that, or I can move right into Q and A, whichever you prefer. Yeah. So you know, if you're new, um, I think Hannah likes if people use the hand raise function. Um, so you can either you know ask a question, or here's Gina, or um, introduce yourself, say a few words, because we also want to use this opportunity now to get to know who you are and how you may want to collaborate. Um, some of you are in the neighborhood and in New York, and some of you are tuning in from. Tanzania, Georgia, and other places. Um, so, you know, there may be opportunities to do something in your own neighborhood, but maybe we can share it um, through one of um, like an online platform on that day. So we sort of build different satellite and actions. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyone that would like to um, give a brief intro, just use the hand raise function. Um... Yeah. All right, Gina, I see you. Let me see if I, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and unmute if you wanna introduce yourself. Great, thank you so much. So uh, first of all, congratulations on all the work you guys have been doing over your lifetime, probably started in preschool and you didn't know it at the time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I live in Connecticut, but I work at theater for a new city and I'm a resident playwright. And um, basically uh, during, so climate week 2021 that we just had with the UN getting back together and uh, Al Gore was the primary speaker. I was the only playwright who did a trilogy and we did a free reading and I had all Broadway stars that participated in that free reading of the climate trilogy. Some of them flew up from Hollywood, California. Some of them were New York's finest and um, it was a major, major sort of uh, event as far as the talent pool. So I just came, I thought I wanted to see what you guys are doing. Um, you know, uh, I have not been able to participate because writing three full length plays that can win awards, that can gather celebrities from Hollywood and New York City is not a little thing to muster. Um, so um, I just wanted to add my support and, you know, help. Uh, the, those three plays are done. In fact, we're probably doing a reading in Beverly Hills of one of the plays in a month with Judd uh, Nelson, who did um, Breakfast Club, if you remember that old movie. <laughs> so then, you know, it's over generations, it's over space. And, you know, I'm like a new kid on the block at Theater for New City, um, but I'm there, I'm a resident artist and I have this trilogy, which is happening around, uh, mostly in terms of benefits. It's not bread and puppet theater, really, it's kind of, feature film more like Leonard DiCaprio's film that just, you know, is hitting the Oscars. So it's sort of like a different take on it, but it brings different talent, um, you know, to bear. And um, I just wanted to be, uh, you know, involved in some way. Can I write a play in, a, in six weeks? Yeah, I just did um, for them. They gave me a space in December. It's called William and James. It got a world premiere. We, we paused because of COVID. It's not about sustainability, it's, but it is about the spiritual world. Um, and offerings. And I like some of the words you guys were using, which were sacrifice and, you know, you're using some hot buttons. And um, I just didn't know if I could be helpful, you know, in yeah, well, any way. You, Gina. We'll definitely I'm reach connected. Out. No, we'll definitely reach out because maybe, you know, if there's a way to offer um, theater for the new city is off, has sent performers to perform, right. even if they can't, don't have within that context, you know, we can't present like a whole play, but we could still um, present a song or, you know, a excerpt, um, a piece that somehow relates. Last year, Theater for the New City um, simultaneously opened up Theater for the New City, had a whole lot of performances related to climate on that day. So it was listed within our map of ecological city, um, theater for the new city. So anyway, we can yeah, talk. Before it. Crystal's gone. So we could talk and I just happen yeah. to be, they're looking for the Pulitzer Prize out of me sometime along. Great, <laughs> and well, so glad you joined. Thank you. Yeah, so, and my husband was, um, just so you know, he, um, he was an assistant fire chief. And so Hurricane Sandy, all of that, he has the emergency responder point of view, as well as being an actor on, you know, major film shoots and stuff in the city. So um, I think that devastation of Hurricane Sandy, you know, it's all a circle. 
as many uh, songwriters have written, or at least one that we know of. Um, but, you know, the connection goes all the way to Jackson Brown, if you want to go there. I'm just throwing that out to you. So, you know, the, be careful what you wish for, because it could become, um, you could become the center of the universe. Mm. Not to, you know, the movement uh, is gigantic. And, um, you know, we're all there to support uh, everything that you do. So I don't think I'll be writing a song when Jackson Brown has done, uh, you know, a lifetime of work. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, thanks, um, thanks, Gina. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Gina. I'm going to go ahead and click on other people have their hand raised here. Um, Jeff, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute here and I'll lower your hand if you want to introduce yourself. Jeff, you can go ahead and unmute whenever you're ready. Oh, well, it, it wasn't letting me. It, it is oh, okay. okay. Good. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah. So down in Atlanta, um, that's where I'm based. Um, I'm a community-based public artist and a teaching artist and uh, do large scale community-based architectural scale public sculpture. But uh, the last several months, I've been pulled into a huge new farm. Uh, there's a, it's a public school that is an urban school and yet has a surprisingly large amount of land. I think people would never imagine that it's cool. And it's not even like the ball field. It's just land, it's just open space. And uh, so we have just now um, gotten going with what's gonna be an absolutely huge farm. And uh, I am not a farmer. I am you know, cramming on uh, what I need to know about all these things, soil and, and, and plants. But uh, my job is to coach a design team to uh, create all the physical aspects of the farm um, uh, you know, the, the pathways, the space, uh, the gathering places, um, a ramada. We saw a ramada out at the uh, Edible Landscape, uh, Alice Waters uh, Edible Landscape in, in Berkeley. And uh, which is just a lovely circular uh, place to have people figure out what's going on on any given day. Are we planting? Are we harvesting? What's going on? Um, so those kinds of things. Um, but it's all also being planned for performance. We're, we're calling them performance swales within the gardens, that there's pockets within the gardens that are designed for dance, for uh, music performance. Um, so um, this all is tying in with how the International Teaching Artists Conference is really moving towards climate action and promoting climate action. There's um, a funder in Austria that is now funding uh, residencies that are address climate crisis um, in five countries, led by five artists in five countries. And by the end of this month, they are asking for proposals and they're gonna fund three more. Uh, these are extended residencies. So um, if you don't know about ITAC, the International Teaching Artists Collaborative, uh, there's also an international conference coming up in September in Oslo, which is where this started 10 years ago. Um, and uh, I'm really pleased with how this organization is uh, acting more collaboratively, becoming a collaborative and promoting dialogue amongst artists. Um, and also, you know, uh, what that international dialogue really needs to be besides about the art making that we all love to do uh, in and of itself. Um, so I'm a STEAM artist in residence at a STEAM school down in Atlanta, which means that I do partnerships with teachers in all subject areas and all grade levels. Um, I'm only there 45 days a semester. I'm not like on staff or anything, but um, I float and I figure out how people are teaching and what they need to teach. And then um, I do something that's often based in sculpture, but sometimes it's performance based. So I work a lot with dance companies and we do video mapping projections on the architecture as digital dance sets. And all of our, every year at Earth on Earth Day, we do a, an extravaganza of uh, outdoor uh, performative steam, we call it, which is dance based, but includes musicians in unexpected places. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank around. you. Um, we just have a few minutes, so we really, okay. you know, sorry, but we, no, you know, no, that's, that's good. yeah, I mean, we want to know who's here, but we're trying to, you know, hear from some other people in terms of 
who were around and how they might want to plug in. So is there anybody? Yeah, who thank you so much for sharing all that, Jeff. If you want to share any of that information in the chat so others can access it. Yeah, Wendy, Wendy's asking in the chat. Yeah, we'd love to hear more about your project if you have any links or resources to share. Uh, there is one other hand raised here right now. Um, so I'll go ahead and give them the floor. One second here, let's find you. All right. All right, Willa, would you still like to share? You had your hand raised, but it went down. Yeah, it's, it's telling me I have to ask you to unmute. Wait, try again. There you go. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, just thank you so much for having me. It looks like an amazing event. Um, I'm a musician and a sound artist um, and also an environmental scientist or studying to be one. So I like to bring in um, environmental sounds in my music and do um, place-based music and pl also plant and organism-based music. Uh, I am not local to the New York area, but I will be um, hopefully traveling up that way in May. So I kind of wanted to see if I could tap in and kind of experience what looks like a really amazing event. So I just thank you for having me on this call today. Thank you so much, Will. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll share contact info in the chat there. And if you want to share any of yours, that way someone can reach out to you. Um, yeah, environmental music sounds super interesting. I'm sure there are people in the chat that would love to hear more. Um, anyone else new to the call here today? Don't see any other hands raised, but um, this is also our time for Q&A. So if anyone has um, any specific questions, um, now would be the time to ask them. Um, there are some questions in the chat um, from Kathleen B that I think, do you uh, want me to read it, uh, Kathleen? Or just um, process it and reach out to you later or? What was it? So yeah. Oh, she's on mute. She said, can she you unmute her? Yeah, one second here, let me find. Um. Okay, there you are. I asked you to unmute, there you go. Yeah, thank you. I um, just was curious in terms of uh, the kind of diversity that's there in New York. Obviously, I don't know the neighborhoods of those gardens, but I've wondered if any of the materials were written and translated into other languages any native land acknowledgements. I didn't hear or see anything like that in the pictures. And then any environmental or food justice themes. Yeah. I, I, I miss the kind of social, you know, equity piece. Yeah, well, we, you know, we're, we're doing very short presentations. So you're sure, certainly not seeing every everything that's there. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, with the project, you know, engages so many different kinds of people. I mean, a lot of the material, one of our partners was um, down in Chinatown. And so they would translate the materials. Um, so we also have interns that speak uh, Mandarin and, um, you know, have been reaching out more and more to the Asian community. So if you look at the Lower East Side, I mean, it's largely, there's a lat large Latino population. There's um, the South end of the Lower East Side borders into Chinatown. So Chinatown is also part of it. And then in the East Village, you know, it's a very mixed community. You've got NYU students, you've got artists, you've got the old time gardeners that come from various different um, cultural backgrounds. Um, you know, Wendy, maybe Wendy can give you a little bit of a broader view of some of the initiatives within the neighborhood, you know, that are focused on that. And certainly the Lower East Side Girls Club um, that's been a partner has been very active on um, environmental justice and food justice. And, you know, we work with they're like 50 different partners. So each of them sort of has their own theme or what they're engaged in, and then they're invited to participate. So it's really a framework 
like a mosaic where people can come and then add to it every year. So it's not, there isn't like one vision that's overly defined. And so many people um, add to it and add their voices into it in terms of what all of these um, different issues are. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, let's see, does anyone else have any other questions at this time? I see Marsha, awesome. I'll have you unmuted. Hi, I wanted to know two things or three things. One, do we have actual dates for the, for the celebration? And um, that's one question. The other question is if, you know, when I tell people about Earth Celebrate, like this little review that you did here, the summary, is that available online? I mean, I know your website, but is it available as such on your website? Or, yeah. and what would you click on the website? History? Um, there's history. The homepage summarizes the project. There's a page for the Ecological City Project. Okay, good. Okay, good. That's two. And the third question is more personal. I want, do you have an assignment for me this year? Because you've always given me an assignment, you know, <laughs> a place, something to write yeah, upon. Yeah, no, I'm thinking the East River Park. Okay. What's happening with the East River Park. So we'll yes. get into that. I'll, I'll connect with you on that. And then, yeah, maybe we can then also hear from Rosa and um, Pedro. Why don't you say a few words about your participation? Rosa and Pedro, where did you go? And are you able, there you are. Okay, I asked you to unmute. Let's see if you can accept it. There you go. There you are. You can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Great. Yeah. Do you want to start? Or should I? Yeah. Well, um, I enjoy every year. Every year I do this. Uh, I love it. I enjoy it. This is like um, I made a promise. As you know, my mother passed away, and um, I do this for her and the community. I enjoy the art. I love working with you guys. I can't wait to start the new um, the new costumes. Um, I got Rosa here with me. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, if you got any questions for me, I'll answer anything you want. <laughs> I enjoy the, the work is fantastic. The costumes are like um, they had so much thought into them. They look so real. They look so good. That's what caught my eye that you pick up stuff out of nothing and make something out of nothing. And it looks beautiful. And, uh, and it has a meaning to it. It has a meaning behind them. And each uh, costume means something. And I, I love it. I, I enjoy the work. That's why I'm there every year without fail. Thank you, Pedro. Can't wait to have your participation. And we wait. definitely want to hear from, um, you know, Wendy and Allie, I think was going to give yep. a little brief update. Yeah. We'll do a brief community update. If everyone here wants to confirm, we've gotten our questions out of the way. Of course, we've shared in numerous materials and contact um, forms in the chat. So if you do have more questions, um, there are resources to follow up. Um, but for the sake of time, we'll go ahead yeah. and move forward to um, our brief um, community announcements here. So first we're gonna hear from um, the um, East, East River of Coastal Resiliency. So the East River Park Action will be hearing from Ali Ryan. So let me go ahead and get you, do you want me to spotlight for these Felicia? Um, well, does Ali has a presentation? Correct. So, all right, so we'll get you spotlighted and we'll hear more about that. Okay, hello. No. Okay, so I'd like to give an update about East River Park. Um, the picture, most of the pictures you see in this presentation were taken today. And as Felicia mentioned, right now the park 
has been destroyed, but there is a park still here that we're still fighting to keep. And if you'll go to the next slide, what I wanna talk about is like how you can get involved to save East River Park. And so this picture here is of um, what the amphitheater used to be, but people are posting signs on the fencing to um, remember the park. And if you'll go to the next slide. Well, there's a community meeting held every day near the Houston Street entrance at 1 p.m. And this is a photo of the community community meeting that was held today. So I encourage everybody who lives in Manhattan in New York City to come and um because people are talking about what's going on and how, what they're doing. If you'll go to the next slide. Um, wait, thanks. And then, so this coming Saturday on February 12th, there's going to, um, we're inviting like the community to come to Corlier's Hook to create Valentine's and post on these trees that you see post um, in the pictures because the city is planning to chop these trees down in preparation to um, remove the pedestrian bridge and to bring in a new pedestrian bridge. If you'll go to the next slide. And then one thing I also wanna share, and this actually ties in with the mural, is to join the Facebook group I loved the East River Park, a beautiful memory we will never forget. And so I just wanted to share um, photos of East River Park. Um, these are personal photos, but I just wanted to share like over the seasons and also a little bit of history. because I think it, I think it's pretty cool that Nirvana has a photo <laughs> at the amphitheater. And um, so people are also like sharing memories online. And then if you'll go to the next slide. Maggie? Um, can you go to the next slide? Maggie? Well, as we wait, I'll just go ahead and tell you, a lot of people are concerned about the wildlife in East River Park since, uh, over 400 trees have been chopped down. And so um, we're putting together squirrel boxes for the squirrels, because actually right now is mating season for squirrels. And so if you want to help and donate to buy more squirrels and put them in East River Park, because the Parks Department has actually agreed in helping us put up these squirrel boxes, you can go to eastriverparkaction.org to donate. And then if you'll go to the next slide. Maggie. Oh. Okay, thank uh, And so what I also wanna show is that also we need, since 40% of the park is open, we need to protect our park that is open. So if you, so these are photos that were taken today uh, that, um, so it, to reflect, like it's important to call 311 and elected officials to draw attention to safety concerns, such as the, like the, uh, as they're, as the um, Delancey Street pedestrian bridge is being dismantled, there's no sidewalk for the community to use, which there should be. And in the sense of like, there should be the barriers on the road so people can walk safely. So you can call 311 to, to say something. And then also the construction crews are driving along the Esplanade that is open to the public and that they should not be doing that. So Ali, thanks so much. It's just, we're running out of time. Okay, well, that was it. I just wanted, so thank um, you, thank you and um, great. So everybody got a little bit of an update of what's going on with the park. And I think Wendy um, is gonna 
say a few words about the Lower East Side Sustainability Initiative, so. Yep, lovely, thank you so much, Ali. We'll go ahead and move on to Wendy here, one moment. Unmute, you see my slide? Good, okay, hi everybody, I'll make it quick. Um, we have new tools at Green Map, and um, you can make a Green Map where you live very easily with this. If you want to grab that QR code, I mean that bit.ly or QR, you can add to the new one we're making about what's new and green in New York. So to me, one of the antidotes to the loss of the park is to celebrate more. And that's where it ties into what Earth Celebration is doing as well. But a map is good for every day. Um, here, let me go to the next slide. Oop. So, oops, sorry. Uh-oh. Um, the park is 42% open, so please use it. There's gonna be stewardship activities this spring. Allie touched on the wildlife realities and you can be part of a voice for positive change. Um, I'm gonna not repeat everything she said about when you can get together there, but the park is beautiful, even when you can't use very much of it. So please do use it. Don't be afraid. Uh, sorry, I don't, maybe I'm, uh, shouldn't show it in this pre present mode. Um, okay, there we go. This was a really beautiful green area, the, the track that was made from, um, you know, the smaller track, it had tennis courts around. What I'm concerned about is the toxics under that are coming from the bridge. So that's part of the reason I started East River Park. Oops, sorry. I'm really having a problem here. Sorry, folks. One more second. I should have had you do it. <laughs> Wouldn't have had all these issues, sorry. Well, Anyhow, we have sensors up, fair quality sensors up because there are toxics in the soil, especially under the bridge. So check out anytime eastriverparkaction.org slash sensors. If you wanna get involved in stewardship, there's Lower East Side Ecologies. All the community gardens also need your help. Um, whether you live in New York or somewhere else, especially young people, Get involved in the gardens. You'll learn so many skills. It's really capacity building. It's terrific networking. And you have a new place to hang out. So create a, a new neighborhood living room with your neighbors if you don't have them yet. Um, let's see. Oh, these are just some of the, um, Ali already touched on the protests, but there's signage around. People are out, there's an outpouring of creativity. And that's why I'm glad that the mural project is coming up and all of that. But this is not. This is a, a real thing happening in our backyard that the whole world is really watching. So it's important that we keep standing up, keep uh, pushing. Oops, excuse me. Um, okay. You can also take care of street trees. So I helped get a thousand new street trees planted in our part of the city, but talk to your, find out how you do it in your city get stewardship going so more people know, and you can do it on a casual basis like JK did, it's not official. Um, I'm gonna stop, this is driving me crazy. Let's <laughs> deck over the drive, sorry folks. And um, you know, the we have a lot of possibilities right now that we didn't have a year ago. Things are opening back up again, and it's a great time for all of us to, um, get the things together. I will stick the links in the chat and you can see that directly. Um, thank you, everybody. Thanks. So thanks everybody. Um, we're gonna, Hannah, you can introduce our closing movement. Absolutely, yes. Thank you everyone so much. Um, if you've been to one of our Zoom meetings before, you know that we, um, have taken a pawn since we are not able to formally collaborate with each other physically. Um, we like to do this um, virtual collage and collective movement. So I'm going to play a song and we ask that everyone pull up a picture of nature um, on their phone, um, something that you're able to hold up to your camera. I'm gonna play this song, um, Super Nature, we're gonna listen to it for a little bit and then we're gonna participate in a collective movement. So I'll have everyone follow me. We're gonna put our hands this side, this side, and then we put them in a circle. And then you'll hold up your picture of nature. Does that make sense to everyone? 
Yeah. It'll be a cool visual that we can share with everyone and show that we're, you know, still making art together in our own creative way. So I'll go ahead and get the song started. If everyone wants to pull up their photo of nature um, and then watch me for the cue. Yeah, and then if you can go through the different grid views, if some of you are off your camera, maybe join to, if you can participate in this. Otherwise we get a blank square. <laughs> Thank you everyone for staying patient through these technical trials here. Um, so make sure I have this. Let me try one more time. Science opened up the door. 